So this is our pop-up display of Ladybird archive material that's held at the University of Reading. The display is called Reading Ladybird. First of all, we started with some of the really early Ladybird material. The first Ladybird books were printed in around 1915 by the printer Wills and Hepworth. And the earlier books are very much different from the kind of iconic design that we know today. Moving over here, we've got a single printed sheet, and this is where Ladybird books start to be recognised. And, and this kind of ingenious idea was really born out of necessity. Wills and Hepworth, the printer, were kind of responding to post-war paper shortages. So they engineered a way to produce an entire Ladybird book, which is 56 pages, the dust cover and the end covers, printed on one single sheet of 30 by 40 inch paper. And they actually produced these books in between their more profitable commercial jobs. But obviously it turned out that Ladybird itself was much more kind of profitable and had much more longevity. And that single printed sheet is captured here in the artwork for the story of printing, where Ladybird tells the history of, and development of printing. And here it's got its own printing presses um, at Loughborough. And you can see two of its technicians holding that single sheet. The first of the iconic Ladybird books that we know was the brain, sort of brainchild of Douglas Keane, who was a salesman at the printing company. And he had a real significant impact on the book's content and Ladybird's kind of subsequent success. And Keane produced a sort of prototype, almost collage book. And this first book that he produced was called British Birds and Their Nests. And it was published in 1953. And it completely sold out in, in so many different stores. Moving into the 1950s, there was a growing interest in how young children learn to read. And it began to be kind of widely accepted that if mothers engaged their children in reading at home, then it would have a marked effect on how the children performed at school. And the Learning to Read series kind of responded to the appetite for preschool learning. And within these books, you get the pairing of very, very simple text on the left-hand side with this very detailed, very rich illustration on the right-hand side. Shopping with Mother is one of the most iconic examples of this, and it was illustrated by a graphic designer, Harry Wingfield, published in 1958. And these illustrations are really typical of that kind of ladybird aesthetic. It was a very kind of relatable, safe and, and domestic world. Moving on, we've got some subject matter that's very close to the concerns of the Museum of English Rural Life. And here, Charles Tunnicliffe, he illustrated a really popular series called What to Look For. And here we've got the What to Look For in spring, summer, autumn and winter books. The What to Look For series was published uh, between 1960 and 1961. And that was a, a period of real rural upheaval and a change from traditional agricultural practice to factory farming and processes of mechanisation. But what Charles Tunnicliffe was able to do was to sort of marry this vision of the countryside in which modern machinery was really harmonised with the landscape. In the 1960s, there was a breakthrough piece of research in which a researcher called William Murray, who was a school teacher, found that there were 12 keywords that made up 25% of a child's vocabulary. After a meeting between the researcher William Murray and Ladybird's um, Douglas Keane, they produced the, the keywords reading scheme book. However, you can imagine that the books were quite limited uh, in their sort of narrative opportunities by just having these 12 key words. And that's where the characters of Peter and Jane became synonymous with the series. Towards the end of our display here, we've just got some beautiful illustrations and the books that they come from. Here you've got Tricks and Magic. This is one of my favourite books. And a fantastic book, The Ladybird ABC, where every letter is illustrated. And here we've got I Think. <laughs> 